Good Monday afternoon. I'm Hayden Balgavy. We want to begin with breaking news from the U.S. Supreme Court. Hours ago, the justices ended term with a landmark decision on presidential immunity. It's a decision that has a direct impact on former President Donald Trump's current legal troubles. Nidia Cavazos has more. In a 6-3 opinion, the Supreme Court ruled Monday the former presidents have absolute immunity from prosecution for official acts related to their court constitutional powers. But the court said there is no immunity for unofficial acts and gave some guidance on how lower courts can draw that line. For those things that are just within the president's ambit, absolute immunity. For official acts in general, at least presumptive immunity. For unofficial acts, no immunity. Former President Donald Trump has repeatedly argued that he had absolute immunity. You have to give a president full and total immunity. In a scathing dissent, Justice Sonia Sotomayor wrote about the potential dangers of this decision on U.S. democracy. The ruling affects special counsel Jack Smith's prosecution of Trump for election interference for his role in the January 6th assault on the U.S. Capitol. The case now goes back to the lower court which you'll have to look at what acts are official and what are unofficial. There is an enormous amount of legal work that is now going to have to unfold over the next several months. By waiting until July to issue their ruling, the justices have severely reduced the likelihood of Trump standing trial before the November election. Nidia Cavazos, CBS News, the Supreme Court. Now, today's ruling follows another Supreme Court decision regarding January 6th. On Friday, the high court said that the Justice Department overstepped its bounds when it charged hundreds of accused rioters with obstruction. Now, that includes the case for Arkansan Richard Barnett, who you may remember from those viral photos showing him with his legs propped up in the Speaker of the House's office. Now, the Department of Justice is asking for an extension for Richard Barnett's motion for release pending appeal after the ruling. Good afternoon, Arkansas. Hey, Nathan, wanted to ask you a quick favor, though, before you get going, because yeah. today I'm hearing a rumor that we may not even hit 90 degrees. Are you it, kidding me? It is a possibility. Hard to believe, wow. right, Hayden? July After, 1st. Yeah, July 1st. <laughs> from what we experienced yesterday, we had a front make its way through, produced some spotty showers and storms, and now we're feeling the benefits of that frontal passage in the form of not as hot temperatures and also not as humid. It's 84 right now in the capital city, 86 in Hot Springs, 81 in Searcy, only 72 in Mountain Home where there's more clouds. But look at this 24 hour temperature difference. 10 degrees cooler here in the capital city, 14 degrees cooler for you folks in Clinton, even down to South Arkansas. It is also cooler and we look at the dew point difference. That's also great news because the dew points are about five to 10 to 15 degrees lower than what we saw this time yesterday. So there you see we'll flirt with 90, but I think a lot of locations will stay into the 80s with lots of sunshine, a few clouds mixed in and lows tonight will be able to drop down into the 60s from Little Rock and off to the north and northeast low 60s in Batesville and possibly even Clinton. You see that warmer air though into southwest Arkansas and that warmer air is headed back in our direction on your Tuesday. It's going to be a hotter day and the humidity will also start to build its way in here from the south and southwest. Get ready. It's going to be hot like a firecracker out there on 4th of July. I'll have more on that toasty forecast coming up. Nathan, thank you. We are following developing news out of Jacksonville where police are investigating the death of a teenager. Officers responded to the 1100 block of Heather Street yesterday morning. That's where they found a 17 year old girl with multiple gunshot wounds. She was taken to the hospital where she later died from her injuries. Investigators are now looking for the suspect who they say left the scene in a white sedan. If you have any information, you are asked to contact the Jacksonville Police Department. In Jefferson County, police in Pine Bluff are working to learn more about a deadly weekend shooting. Here is what we know right now. Officers responding to the Village Green Apartments on South Olive Street. That was late Saturday night. When they arrived, they found 28-year-old Tamark Jack unresponsive in his apartment. Officers tell us he was shot several times and died at the scene. There is no information on a suspect at this time, but be sure to stay with THV11 and THV11.com for the very latest. 
Well, Friday marked one week since a gunman opened fire outside of the Mad Butcher store in Fordyce, killing four people and hurting several others. Governor Sarah Huckabee Sanders traveled to the small town yesterday to pay her respects. Now she and other state leaders met with victims, families, first responders and community members who were still healing. During her visit, the governor talked about the long and slow process of recovery and how the people of Fordyce will make it through this tragedy with each other's help. The people of Fordyce that have come together, put their arms around each other. I think that says so much about who this community really is and the way that we want it to be defined. Meanwhile, the Mad Butcher Grocery Store is set to reopen tomorrow morning with limited hours. The store opens at 9 a.m. and closes at 6 p.m. We're going to have more from that event tomorrow morning. THV 11 is your election central 126 days from the big day and President Joe Biden is attempting to reassure supporters after his debate performance last week. The president appeared more energized at a rally after the debate. But as Nancy Cordes tells us, a new CBS News poll shows voters have serious concerns. Joe Biden is our nominee. Joe Biden is our leader. Top Democrats closed ranks around the president Sunday as a slew of editorials from some of the nation's largest newspapers called on him to drop out. I want to remind everybody that one debate does not define a person's record. Very clearly. He should stay in this race. And yet a new CBS poll finds Thursday's rocky performance did take a toll. Look, if we finally beat Medicare. 72 percent of voters now believe Biden does not have the mental and cognitive health to serve as president, up from 65 percent before the debate. Nearly half of Democrats said he should step aside as the nominee, while virtually no elected Democrats have been willing to go that far on the record. Some acknowledged the panic publicly. There are a lot of lingering uh, concerns, Alex. We can't uh, put on a happy face on this. There are very honest and serious and rigorous conversations taking place at every level of our party. Top Biden officials still haven't explained why Biden seemed to struggle the way he did on Thursday. But they tell CBS News they are staying the course. Nothing has changed. We are full steam ahead, one said. We still believe Biden is the best position to beat Trump. They point to his energetic post-debate campaign stops in Atlanta, Raleigh, and New York. I give you my words of Biden. I would not be running again if I didn't believe with all my heart and soul I can do this job. Because quite frankly, the stakes are too high. Part of the calculus here for the Biden team is that there's no guarantee that an alternate candidate would do better against Trump than Biden would. Polling being disseminated by the campaign indicates that they all fare the same or worse than Biden would. Nancy Cordes, CBS News, the White House. And back here at home, the deadline to get a proposed amendment on the November ballot is this Friday. Organizers have then, until then rather, to get close to 90,000 signatures from registered voters throughout the state on each of those proposed amendments. Now, this time around, groups are pushing proposals relating to abortion, education, medical marijuana, and more. You can learn more about those proposed amendments and the process of getting them on the November ballot right now on THV11.com. Meanwhile, several new state laws take effect today, July 1st. Those include a raise to state salary compensation pay grades, the creation of a self-funded cyber attack response program that will protect government agencies who are targeted by cyber attacks, and an amended law concerning body art and the requirements to teach it. You can learn much more about each of those laws right now on THV11.com. Just search new laws. We're talking weather now. Hurricane season is in full swing, just getting going, and a major storm heading towards the Caribbean. More on the record breaking hurricane barrel after the break. Nathan? And Hayden, we are seeing a break from the extreme heat. Heat advisories, excessive heat warnings have primarily retreated out of central Arkansas, but that won't be the story for long. I'll let you know when we'll see more heat alerts as we go into the next several days coming up. And if you're heading out of town this week, of course, it is the 4th of July on Thursday. Get ready for some company. Still ahead, we're taking a look at the best times to travel ahead of the 4th and what you'll want to avoid. Got the details just ahead.